Hi everybody and welcome to the second part of uh, tracing C function app open uh, where we'll be uh, focusing on kernel debugging with Windows debugger and working through user mode to kernel executive subsystem. Uh, if you missed the first part, uh, you can find it on my GitHub page. Tracing C function app open, uh, here is the first part uh, where we were, we were focusing more uh, on the user mode how you can walk through uh, and use a module and tracing to NT API. Um, if you want to download the sample and uh, debug symbols for the sample, they are all available uh, on my GitHub page. Uh, the link to this page is available below this video. Uh, the second part is uh, documented here quite well. Uh, it contains a uh, every step I will be doing in this video so you can easily reproduce it. Uh, it also contains uh, some guides for you or uh, some tips for IDA and Windows debugger, useful commands for Windows debugger and every command I will be using here is uh, documented here. So let's jump to the second part. Uh, tracing C function app open using Windows debugger kernel debugging. So content of this video is uh, uh, we will be performing remote lib kernel debugging with Windows Debugger Preview. Uh, I will show you how you can attach the kernel debugger to process, uh, which has not started yet. It could be quite a tricky because uh, there are many, many uh, publicly available articles about how you can do it, how you can uh, use the kernel debugger and uh, debug some uh, process uh, from the user mode uh, perspective. But uh, these articles are usually oriented on how you can attach to this process which uh, already started, which is running. And I want to show you how you can do that if uh, the process uh, has not started yet. Uh, it could be quite a tricky and there are very many, um, very many misleading informations about it. So uh, be careful about it. I will show you how you can stay in specified process context from user mode to kernel mode. Uh, I will show you how you can trace the process with Windows Debugger. Uh, I will explain what is a system service number. I will also explain what is a system service dispatch table. We will investigate the system service dispatch table. Uh, I will show you how you can apply kernel function times in EDA because uh, uh, there are some function in EDA, uh, the kernel, uh, kernel API that uh, EDA has uh, not uh, uh, implemented every type uh, for arguments in this uh, kind of function. So I will show you how you can apply these function types. Uh, we will investigate interesting structure in kernel and we will be digging deeper. Uh, there are some preparing steps. So first of all, prepare virtual machine for kernel debugging. Uh, I will be using 32-bit Windows 7 because I want to avoid uh, WAF64 uh, emulation. Uh, I uh, I will be using 32-bit uh, Windows 7 uh, because of simplicity. I don't want to cover here uh, how uh, WAF64 emulation work uh, because it could be quite uh, complex and difficult to understand. So I really recommend for this exercise to use 32-bit Windows 7. Uh, we will be disabling the ASLR, which is uh, address system layout randomization in uh, the app Open EXE. Uh, app open is uh, our sample uh, which will be used in this exercise and uh, I will show you how we can disable the ASLR because it will help us uh, to easily debug this sample or uh, basically with disabling the ASLR we force the app open exe sample be to be loaded every time on the same virtual base address if symbols needed uh, for app open exe uh, you can change the PDB path in debug di directory of AppOpenEXE to point to your host. Uh, I will show you how you can do that later. Uh, prepare Windows Debugger Preview for kernel debugging and prepare uh, IDA uh, because I want to uh, put there the NTOS kernel EXE because it's a kernel executive, executive subsystem part. Basically, we will transfer the execution from user mode to the kernel executive subsystem. Uh, which is NTOS kernel, and I want to show you how you can uh, benefit from comparing the location where you are in Windows Debugger and when you are when where you are in IDA. It could be very very helpful and handy because 
Ida has nice uh, graph view and uh, the compile view. You can get a better overview where you are and uh, where the execution flow goes. So you basically you avoid uh, getting lost. Uh, how to set VM and host for kernel debugging using Windows Debugger. Uh, here is another link to my another uh, uh, post. If you click on it, you go somewhere here and you can see here settings for exercise. So just make these settings and we'll be prepared for the Windows kernel debugging. Uh, it's, a setting, it's settings for VM and for your host. Uh, execution flow example. Uh, we will be running the fopenexe, which basically calls uh, UCRT based DLL fopen. UCRT based DLL is a C runtime library, and there is some uh, other execution flow which points to the kernel 42 DLL, create file W. Uh, it goes to the kernel base, uh, create file W, and it goes to the NTDL and the create file. And basically, these uh, NT create file in NTDLL is uh, the last part of user mode, and after that uh, there is transition uh, into the kernel mode. So uh, NTDLL NT create file is uh, in real. It's not implementation of the real NT create file function. The real implementation is implemented in the kernel executive subsystem. Uh, so we have to. Uh, get to the to to this location which is in kernel and I will show you how you can do that how you can still stay in context of the debug the process and uh, I will explain everything later you can see here some sysenter instruction which is for 32 bit processes uh, and this instruction causes the transition from the user mode to the kernel mode to appropriate to specifics uh, to specific uh, function after that, there are some uh, interesting function in the uh, execu so executives uh, in the kernel executive subsystem. Uh, I will explain later. Here are steps in Windows Debugger Preview. Uh, basically, these steps are covered in this video. Here is some explanation about uh, transition from user mode to kernel mode. How does it work? I will also explain it in this video. And uh, some Windows debugger user useful commands not used here. And there are some tips for IDA and how you can apply found function for uh, some kernel API and other stuff. Uh, basically, we will be using a uh, very good uh, source of information, which is process hacker source code. Uh, process hacker source code uh, covers many, many documented uh, NT API. Uh, functions uh, because NT API are not uh, documented uh, by uh, Microsoft, so it could be quite a good resource of uh, information. But uh, there is also React OS documentation, and this documentation is very, very helpful for uh, kernel API. Uh, I will show you how you can benefit from this documentation later. So let's jump to the start. And go to our VM. Uh, I already prepared a open exe sample here. So first of all, we have to disable the ASLR address uh, address uh, system layout randomization, address space layout randomization. Uh, I will be using my favorite uh, exe viewer. Uh, it's a Beaver made by Hasherizade. And first of all, we have to do we have to jump to optional header. You can see NT headers, optional header. You can see here, and an optional header goes to the DL characteristics, and you can see DL can move. Uh, this is basically the ASR. Uh, so we have to delete this. You can do it if you delete the 40 and replace it with OO two zeros, and check that uh, DL can move disappear. Um, Another thing is uh, to change our debug directory, uh, the path to our PDB symbol, uh, PDB file. Uh, so first of all, data di directory, and you can see debug directory. 
uh, if you jump to the debug, you can see here is the path to your PDB file, to the debug symbols for open. And I want to uh, change this because I want to force the Windows debugger to load these symbols for F open from my host. So if my host, uh, I have it in my host here, the F open PDB. So I just copy this location. And I will change it in the VM here. Yes, and if you follow on click, you can see it was uh, already changed. Okay, now click on the sample, right click, and save executable as, and save it as the original. We can replace it. Yes, okay. We can check it again, and you can see here that the in optional header, the DL can move disappear, and debug director directory is pointing to our PDB file in our host machine. So we basically force the Windows debug preview later to load uh, our symbol uh, from this location. Nice. Uh, now it's time to start the Windows Debugger Preview. Uh, we can check uh, in the virtual box uh, settings that I already set up the kernel debugger. If you will follow the guide in uh, the GitHub, uh, you will get the same settings. So you can check that, that serial ports uh, enable serial port. Uh, here is the host pipe and uh, pipe name. Uh, OK, and the same settings sh should be in the Windows Debug Preview file, uh, attached kernel, and you can see the settings is the same. So let's connect to our VM. Okay, so now we can uh, break. Nice. And first of all, what we have to do is uh, check uh, in which process context we are uh, currently in the breakpoint. So you can do it like this process minus one zero basically the minus one is um, get current context and zero uh, give me only simply impor information about this process you can see that you are currently in the system so just uh, press, uh, just uh, put a command reload it basically load all debug symbols for this process and now it's time for quite a very important command uh, we will have to uh, set global flex, the G flex, like this, plus KSL. And what it does, it basically, um, it basically means set the G flex uh, to uh, a load kernel symbols. Uh, I will explain it how uh, and why we are doing this. It's because uh, we want to. Uh, stop or break execution uh, when uh, some uh, when our uh, open exe sample will be loaded into the memory and the process uh, structure uh, representing this process like e process uh, will be created so when we want to uh, set exec uh, set exception uh, on the user mode module we have to uh, set this g flag because our another command is sxe ld f open exe and basically this does a set exception uh, on uh, loading events of f open exe sample and uh, as we already set the gflex uh, we can report a loading of user mode module to the kernel debugger yes i hope it's uh, right
okay we set uh, the exception the when the exception uh, occurs uh, our kernel debugger breaks and that's basically what we want and what we need so now g to continue we can jump back to our uh, vm you can see that it's uh, running and if you run the F open sample you can see here that windows debugger break okay and again we want to make sure uh, or check where we are currently so just again process minus one zero and you can check that you are in the F open exe process uh, and put here the command uh, you can you can now delete gflex because we don't need this anymore and what is next um, we can set this uh, process context as an implicit so go with uh, do it like this dot process and you can see that current uh, implicit process is uh, the F open exe uh, this is the address of a uh, e-process structure representing this process but what is quite uh, interesting now is one thing if you can if you check this again copy this command but uh, replace the zero with seven to get mm, more information about this process oh sorry and what we got here check what it's quite strange there is no peb yeah there is no threads and there is no virtual size virtual space uh what does it mean basically you set the exception on loading the f open exe so the e process structure is already created but it's not properly filled yeah there is no uh, private virtual space for the for the uh, process there is no peb there is no threat environment block there is no threat uh, no uh, no no threat uh, already started so uh, you have to be careful about that uh, now is the time that i want to uh, put a breakpoint on the main function uh, of the F open exe so how you can uh, get the information where is the uh, main function of uh, F open exe uh, we can uh, quite cheat because we can jump to this is our sample and if you you put it in the EDA okay you can immediately end uh, on the main function of this sample and you will just copy this address no. And you can see you are on the main and this is the address so copy this address and you can see uh, that in the main there is called to f open and f close and return so now you can close it and jump to the windows debugger again and Check this address. Oh, so oh four oh one oh, and you can see that there is no code here yet, and that's because there is no virtual size, there is no virtual private space for this process, there is no PEB. Uh, but we already know that in this location there will be the main function uh, when the process will be. Uh, properly initialized so uh, copy this address and put a breakpoint there and we have set breakpoint now you can uh, continue the execution G and you can see that uh, the breakpoint was hit and there is already code if you check again this process you can see here many more information uh, than before you can see there is already PEB there is uh, some virtual size there is also some thread yeah so the process uh, 
successfully initialized, so you, we can continue. But you can see that there is no debug symbols for this sample. You can see it also in a call stack that there is no uh, recognized instructions or no no functions function names. So we can reload reload this, uh, this uh, debug symbol. And as we uh, modified the path to the PDB uh, file of FOpenEXE, which points to our host now, uh, the Windows debugger should uh, load these symbols properly. Yep, you can see these symbols are already loaded. And if you want to reload it in the disassembly view, just uh, reload it like this. And you can see these functions are already recognized, calling f open, calling f close, and returning. And you can check also here that the path of the debug symbol was uh, cached. Yeah, you can see users they forget to stop tracing f open. Basically, this is the path we modified in the sample in uh, VM. So it's correct. I can clear the window. And we are uh, on the main function uh, on the user mode, and we are doing the kernel mode debugging. Uh, now I want to. Uh, I already know that the app open function uh, in a, a UCRT based uh, library goes to the uh, ntdl nt create file. So I want to trace the execution uh, to this location of uh, ntdl nt create file. So we have to find the location where is uh, uh, the address of the NTDL NT create file. So for that purpose, we can uh, go like this: examinate and NTDL NT create file. And you can see here is the address of this function. Uh, just go like this, and you can see here here is the NTDL NT create file. Put a breakpoint there, and go back. Yeah, and now I want to show you the tracing of uh, uh, the app open exe to the NTD and degree file. So we will use the command watch and trace. Here is here should be the start address. So start address, we can copy this address as a start address of tracing. And the end address will be the NTDL NT create file. And let's start the trace. You can see here the tracing, it will take some time. So uh, during the tracing, I uh, will show you uh, we have to do one thing. I want to put the NTOS kernel, which I already prepared. I basically copied the uh, NTOS kernel from the VM. Uh, it's a 32 bit NTOS kernel, Windows 7. And I want to put it to IDA and let it analyze because I want to uh, compare the location where I will be in uh, kernel uh, in the Windows debugger uh, to location in IDA because it could be very helpful the IDA graph view, the compile view to avoid the getting lost. You can see that the analysis is running, so we will let it. Now we can come back to tracing. It's still running, it will take two seconds.
Okay, it's uh, almost end of tracing. Because Kernel-based uh, create file W is uh, before the NTDL NT create file, so it should end. Yeah, now we hit the breakpoint and we can check the trace. Uh, first of all, uh, as I already showed you here, the execution flow app open exe uh, calling UCRT base DLL app open and others others kernel 32. Uh, create file, kernel base, create file, NTDL, create file, NT create file. So you will see it here. Check the call stack. You can see here the open uh, main function goes to UCRT base open, uh, UCRT base is open S, is open dispatch, is open no log, as uh, W is open no log, kernel 32, uh, create file W, and kernel base, uh, create file W, and NTDL, NT create file. And this is basically something what we can see in the uh, trace. You can see here app open main goes to the UCRT base app open. If you scroll a little down, you can see uh, UCRT base open, UCRT base as open S, UCRT base as open dispatch. UCRT base as open no log, UCRT base W as open no log. And here should be somewhere the kernel 32. Kernel 32, create file W. And kernel base, uh, create file W. And it goes to the NTDL and create file, and we hit the breakpoint here. You can see where we are now. Okay, so what we got here, you can see here immediately there is some value 42 in hexadecimal, which goes to the EAX register. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, basically, uh, note this value because this is so. This is this value is named uh, system service number. And this system service number uh, serves as a lookup index. And, and basically, this value goes to EAX register. If you step a little further, you can see here, here is the call to a fast system call. Pass system call 42 in AX register, pass system call. If you step in, you will see the sysenter instruction because we are we are debugging the 32-bit process on 32-bit processor. You can see here the sysenter instruction. And what does it do? It basically uh, uh, calls the transition. Uh, from the user mode to the kernel mode, and uh, it uh, uh, tran uh, transfer the execution with the uh, system service uh, dispatcher routine. Uh, basically, system service dispatcher routine uh, is responsible for real dispatching of the real implementation of system call. Uh, this routine will uh, look uh, for the index the AX, uh, EAX register, the 42 hexadecimal number, it will uh, search this index in a table, which is called System Service Dispatch Table, SSDT, and find this index, 42 in hexadecimal, uh, value on uh, this location, the, on this index, and this value is address of the real implementation of the system call. So for example, uh, 42 in hexadecimal should represent the NT create file, uh, in an NT OS kernel. So basically, the uh, system service dispatcher routine will search for the 42 in hexadecimal, uh, its index, in the SSDT, system service dispatch table, and it will find the real address in kernel where this uh, NT create file uh, implementation is uh, represented. So I want to show you how you can check the uh, SSDT, system service dispatch table because uh, it's very important. Uh, 
we can check the system service dispatch table with this command in kernel debugger. First of all, let's uh, clear the uh, window and uh, we can check the SSDT. So with this command, uh, display the word uh, T K I uh, service table. And you can see here are indexes for system calls. You can see here is index one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and, and others. And uh, if you want to find the index of uh, 42 in hexadecimal, uh, you can do it like this. Uh, if you goes like uh, dt dd display d word uh, and the uh, ki service table plus uh, 42 uh, times uh, 4 and display only first value basically what you do with this command uh, d words are uh, you you are trying to find a, a 40 second uh, d word in this table and every d word is represented with four bytes so basically 42 times 4 and display only the first value and this should represent the empty create file in a system service dispatch table so check this address if you try to disassemble this address you will get something like uh, not properly signed extended so we have to properly sign extended uh, how you can do that you can do it basically uh, again disassembly uh, this address and if you want to sign extend it to 64-bit value you will do it like uh, adding uh, 8fs F -F 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 -F. if you try to disassemble it now you can see it points it point it points to the anti create file in the uh, NTOS kernel now it's time to set a breakpoint there and why I uh, really uh, mentioned the SSDD the system service dispatch table uh it's because uh this table is uh, usually uh used uh in rootkit malvers because they are they are um, overwriting these uh addresses to point to some uh, malicious rootkit code and uh the code is controlled by the rootkit so basically if you are trying to create a file the anti create file points to here to, uh, to the 40 uh, second in hexadecimal in the uh, system service table and uh, in this table this address will point to some rootkit codes so basically hooking ssdt is very uh, commonly used uh, in rootkit malwares so now I'll put a breakpoint there uh, first of all Try the location. You can see anti 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 create file and put a breakpoint there. And breakpoint set. Now I'll continue execution. And the breakpoint breakpoint was hit. So first of all, check that you are still in the context of F open exe because if you set uh, a breakpoint on the anti anti create file function uh, you are basically debugging all processes uh, with the kernel debugger and every other process uh, not only the app open uh, could hit this breakpoint so we want to clear this uh, all breakpoints we already said because we are now where we want to be and you can see that in a uh, call stack that we are still in the app open exe and if, if you are not sure you can do basically again the check current process context yep you are still in F open exe so now clear all breakpoints see uh, asterisk and you clear all breakpoints you can see uh, if you go to the view and breakpoints there is no breakpoint uh, now you are in the uh, kernel executive subsystem. So welcome to the kernel and what ha happens here? You can see here here is only one call to anti IOP create file. So uh, here is very very um, interesting command and very helpful. Basically this command is C 
and what it does it basically uh, means step to next call so you basically uh, step through all this instruction to next call which is a uh, iop create file you can see it here and now we can compare uh, the location uh, with ida and you can uh, examine the execution flow uh, you can see the graph view and other stuff so try to locate this function in the ida so go to the ida the analysis already ended so go to exports filter and find the empty create file you can see here jump here and you can see something like this empty create file and IOP create file. Basically, this is the same as you can see in Windows Debugger. Uh, you can check the decompile view also. Uh, let's synchronize it. And what you got here, you can check that the IOP create file. There is many, there are many, many uh, arguments type which are not implemented in IDA. So how you can uh, retype this uh, function, this uh, NTOS kernel, uh, NTOS kernel function IOP create file, just copy this name. And as I already pointed, uh, here is some tip uh, about React OS documentation. So just go there. And search for this function and you can see here is the definition of this function yeah so basically we can copy that to some text file and we can simply modify it uh, to be a to be able to use it in IDA so first of all you can see the return is empty status uh, but we need only this uh, we don't need out so delete the in and out and delete also the optional And now it's uh, or prepared for uh, it use. So copy that. Uh, go to Ida, and here uh, right click and uh, set item type. You can see it here empty status IOP create file and delete this and copy what you create it press ok and you can see that it uh, is implementing this new type for iop create file come back you can see here all arguments are recognized you can see it nicely and if you go to the iop create file function you can see it here all arguments or parameters are recognized and you can also see that uh, IDA was already implemented it in the decompile view nice uh, now we can check what we can do uh, further you can see that uh, here is the IOP create file we can step into this function so F11 and now we are in this location in this location in windows debugger you can see here that here is the call prop call prop if you zoom out a little bit you can see all the function nice graph view and you can focus on what you want to investigate more 
for example, I found out quite an interesting function. Here is the function. Uh, somewhere here. OB, open object by name. It could be quite an interesting function because you have here the uh, object type and object attributes. Basically, you can get the file name uh, of uh, the future created file. And you can also get information about the type that it's a file. So try to get to this uh, function uh, to the location where it's uh, where it's called in the Windows debugger. So you can do it like uh, PC and uh, step to next call. You can see the next call is prolog. Step to next call. You can see next call is enter lock pop and list. Uh, step to next call. And this should be probably the yeah uh, ob open object by name. Now it could be quite interesting to investigate the uh, the arguments pushed uh, to this function. And if you want to investigate, you can quite uh, it could be quite helpful to uh, recognize these arguments in EDA. So if you jump to the EDA, you can see that OB calling OB open object by name. There is only three recognized arguments. And here are four uh, which are not recognized. So again, you can uh, implement a proper type to this uh, function. If you copy this function, the name of this function, and uh, now you have uh, two uh, possible solutions. You can uh, again use the React OS. And you can see here is the definition for this uh, for this function, or be open object by name. But you can also use uh, the process hacker, uh, process hacker source code. Uh, as I already uh, tell you, process hacker source code has uh, quite a well or documented uh, anti API, but uh, it also contains some uh, kernel API. So try to look at for this search and you can see that process hacker contains uh, something about the ob open object by name if you check that you can see here is the definition for the function so just copy that and we again have to uh, modify it a little bit for the ida use so leave only this uh, yep. And again, delete uh, the in. In optional. And out. Yep, and now you are ready again. Copy that. And use it in either. You can press Y or right click mouse and type like declaration again. Uh, delete this, copy this, and as you saw, it's uh, anti status, so you can change the integer as an anti status. Okay. And it's done. If you come back, you can see all the arguments are recognized. And they are used in the decompile view also in the function OB open object by name. So go back and you can check the arguments here. And we can investigate some uh, kernel structure. Uh, for example, here is the object type. You can see it's a second argument uh, to the function OB open object by name. So let's uh, find this argument. Uh, we are currently a break on the call anti open ob open object by name, and the second argument is here. You can see it was pushed on stack. So let's uh, print the stack. You can do this like td esp, which points to the stack. And second uh, argument should be this value. 
So uh, we can we want to examine the structure which is called object type. Uh, how we can do that? Uh, okay, let's jump into Windows Debugger, and we want to find some uh, type uh, structure type for uh, something uh, which contains object in the in the type. So t display type uh, and t and asterisk uh, obj asterisk and these are some structure types which contains uh, obj uh, and we are trying to find object type you can see it here so copy that again display type object type and second argument on stack And you can see here the structure of object type for this object. And you can see the name is file, so it's an object type file. Uh, another interesting could be quite uh, object attributes because we can find out the file name there. So this uh, argument is uh, the last, the first one to the to this function. And first one argument is uh, pushed on the stack is here and we have to find uh, appropriate uh, the specific um, structure uh, so the object attributes is here so we do basically the same as we did for the object type copy that display type object attributes and uh, copy the first one because it's uh, uh, the first argument on the stack Okay, and we can see here that the object name is example text, and basically it should be the file which will be created later. So we can now continue. Uh, you can dig uh, deeper into the kernel, uh, into the drivers, and whatever. Uh, but for now, it uh, I think it's enough. I wanted to show you how you can investigate the kernel structure and others. So continue. And uh, let's confirm that example.txt will be created. Jump to the VM, and you can see here example.txt. Yep, and that's all. Basically, that's all I wanted to cover. Uh, I wanted to show you how you can basically uh, use the Windows debugger, uh, kernel debugging, or remote leaf uh, kernel debugging, uh, but uh, stay in context uh, in some uh, process and how you can debug this process from the user mode to the kernel mode, uh, what, uh, how the transferring or transition from the user mode to kernel mode, how does it look uh, in the code and what uh, sysenter or syscall instruction do, what is SSDT, system service dispatch table, uh, how does it work, uh, why it's uh, quite important and I want to show you how you can trace this process, uh, how you can investigate kernel structures and other stuff. I hope you enjoyed some uh, tips uh, how, where you can find our interesting information like React OS for a kernel API, uh, process hacker source code for the NT API, and other stuff. So thank you for watching and see you next time.